Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone's having a great time and a great weekend, whatever you're up to in the world. Do you ever wake up in the morning and think, I'm going to go and take photographs today, uh, and then all of a sudden hit a blank wall or a brick wall and you go, I don't know what I want to take photographs of. Well, that happened to me today. You kind of just stare into a blank canvas and although I was looking outside, the clouds were great, uh, the sky was great, it wasn't wet, it wasn't raining, I thought to myself, I really want to go out and shoot some film. But I'd literally just hit a wall thinking, oh, I don't know where to go and shoot. And it wasn't just for the channel, this is, uh, you know, for, for in photography in general. So I decided to, I enjoy going up on the downs. So I thought, well, if I go up on the downs, I've got to change things around. I can't shoot the same things that I've done before. So I thought, well, what if I went back to the downs and photographed the same um, locations and the same subjects that I photographed before in the past but change things around so first of all I thought well what film should I take what camera should I take so uh, I grabbed a roll of L Grey Lomography's L Grey and I grabbed my Franca folding camera I thought right well that's a start I'll first the film and that's the camera choice that I'm going to take and then I had to decide well am I, am I going to challenge myself so I thought of just doing a complete a uh, whole set on that film of shallow depth of field, one shutter speed, and also one tripod position, which was low down. So I thought that'd be quite fun. I took my light meter with me, did some metering, and I was shooting f4 250th of a second, but instead of shooting that film at 100, I was metering it for 50. I was pulling the film, knowing that when I got back into the development, I was gonna um, slow the development down, in effect, pull in the film to get low contrast negs. Sometimes I like doing that, just changes things around a little bit, makes it more interesting. But uh, I quite enjoyed myself doing this little challenge and I mean, I can go back to the, to the downs, up there, do all the same old shots that I've done before, but this time with this uh, different setting, different camera settings in mind. And of course, having a more shallow depth of field, um, it's gonna change the way your photographs look. <laughs> So I quite enjoyed challenging myself and doing that little jig. I was looking forward to doing more jigs and see what I've got. Hopefully they've come out all right. I can get in the dark room, do some more jigs. Prints. So I developed the negatives in x -Tol. One part to one part, six minutes I did. And when I developed the negatives, I started to scan them in, but I noticed one of them had a scratch on it. I thought, blimey, where's that scratch come from? I'm pretty careful with my negs. Um, and I couldn't figure that one out. Maybe it was my fingernails or something when I was loading the film, you know, and that's another thing I'd recommend. Make sure your fingernails, and you haven't got, you know, sharp fingernails or whatever, because that can sometimes catch on the film, on the emulsion side, as you're loading the film into the reel, and you can end up with little scratches. Um, like I said, I'm very careful. And then I started looking at the other negatives, and this, the, the whole batch seemed to have these strange imperfections, like scratches all along them, and I haven't got a clue how they got in there. All my tanks are clean. They've all been um, washed and dried before use and put in, a, in, in my cupboard, so there's no grit on it, anything inside the tanks. The camera is clean in the back. That's always clean before I shoot. So I can't figure out where these um, scratches come from on the legs, but it hasn't demoralized me. It hasn't get me frustrated. It's just photography at the end of the day. You know, I can go back and shoot it again. I'd be gutted if they were something really important, you know, like a, a paid job or whatever, but they're not. I can just go back and shoot again. And I had a good time up the downs with my music on and uh, walking around, getting a bit of exercise, nice fresh air. Let's go in the dark room and we'll do a little dark room session. I'll show you how I make a print from start to finish. <laughs> So I'm all set up and ready to start making some prints. You can see this is the first negative that I'm going to work on. 
I quite like it. You've got some grass going on. You've got some long grass here. You've got some clouds. Uh, you've got this nice tree stump looking a little bit barren. And in the background, you can see the same make and model as this tree. But that one's uh, got all its branches and stuff on it. So uh, I just thought it looked quite nice. Also, this little bit of wood sticking up as well. Um, you can see the neg when you read it, all these light areas here. Not that is coming from the lens above, so don't worry about that highlight. Uh, you can you can read the negative. All these light areas here, here, and down here are going to be black, obviously because it's a negative. It's going to work in reverse, and the tree kind of looks like a, a middle grey, if I could say that. Um, and the sky looks okay. All the grass, it's all there. The bags of uh, detail there, and you can see this area here. I'm going to intend to burn this in, almost kind of give it a vignette look, um, and I'm going to use this dodge tool here. So I'll just hold it up to the lens. And you can see after I've made the print, I'll just do a little tiny bit of burning in at the bottom like so. I could use my hand and do the same sort of thing and make shapes with my hand if I wanted to. Uh, you can see that there, but I've got these little tiny tools to do the stuff like that for me. So, so look, you can see roughly about there. And I might do a little tiny bit in the sky, but I've got to be careful. I don't want to ruin this wood. I need that to be um, pretty much the same. So uh, let's do some test strips on this and see where we're going. The first thing I've got to do is have a look at my times, how long I'm going to be making the print for. So to do that, I need to waste a little bit of paper and do some test strips and find my times. And then I can make my print. Quite an easy one to work with. So I always use multi-grade filters, usually when I'm printing anyway. I'm going to put a two and a half grade in here. The paper is probably two and a half grade roughly anyway, but I always do that as, a, as my rock to stand on. Now I'm just going to quickly get a focus check using the grain finder. That's going to find the grain on the film. And when that grain's nice and sharp, I know that my print's going to be sharp. It's quite fine grain, this uh, film, possibly also due to the pull process I was using. There's those scratches. I can see a couple there, little buggers. But, um, let's see if I can show you that grain through a camera. It's quite hard to show you through there. I'm just using my phone to try and show you some of the grain. I can't, I just can't, <laughs> I can't get in there to show you, but uh, it's quite fine anyway. My test strip's gonna come down the tree, so I'm not interested in anything else. I wanna get that tree right, and then I can work on the background after. So my test strip's gonna come down the tree. That's where I'm aiming for. So let's bring the aperture down to F8, stop it down. Put my test strip in. Hopefully that's uh, got the tree covered. i just use this piece of card to cover the paper and do my time. So I've got um, two second increments two, four, six, eight, I'm going to do 12, 10, and last one, 12. So that was the last area that I covered, that got two seconds, the top part uh, got 12 seconds of light. Let's put that in the developer and see how it looks. So in it goes into the developer. Now this isn't fresh, I used this developer a couple of days ago, I bottled it, I only did a few prints in it, and uh, I've done a small test, and it's coming out with the same blacks as the test that I did a few days ago, or a couple of days ago, so I'm quite confident I can use this developer for this session, but these prints, you know, they're not going to be great because I know they've got scratches on the legs, so I'm literally just playing around, so this developer is ideal for that sort of thing. And if I do get a nice print or I can see something decent, then I'll stick some fresh developer in, and make a nice photograph. You can see the image coming through now. It looks really nice. So that's my test strip. This is going to be an easy print to make. It's lovely when these come out like this. I've got uh, two seconds, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. I'm just looking at the branch or the trunk of the tree, but also now I'm looking around it as well. So two seconds is way too bright. You can see, got no detail in there at all. Uh, four seconds, starting to get there, but I feel it's a little bit too light on the on the trunk. And six seconds. I just feel like maybe that's getting too dark. So I'm going to go in between these two. That will be five seconds. So let's write that down. So I know two, four, six, and I'll just go like that. Five seconds. That's what I'm going to go for. So I'll do another test strip now. Five seconds and see what the rest of the print gives us. So I'm now going to put another test strip, but this time I'm going to put it diagonally. Make sure I've got the uh, motion side. There it is. Put it right across there. So that will show me some of the ground, some of the sky. We said five seconds. Off it goes. So some of the tree, some of the ground, some of the sky, and that'll give me a better idea if five seconds is gonna work. Let's have a look at that. And it goes. So this developer's working fine for this session, so I'm happy there. 
saves me some developer. So I'll give this just over a minute, and then I'll stop and fix, uh, get it up on the board and show you guys what it looks like. Oh, there it is there. That's the full test print coming down. So I've got the grass, got the sky, got the tree. The tree looks great. Grass looks great. Sky might need a little bit of burning in, but if I start doing that, I'm going to end up haloing the top part of the tree, um, which means you know, I, I could just sort of start burning the sky in away from the tree like so. Um, I'll have to have a little go, but um, let's make a full print and see how it looks. So we'll just let our five seconds go as per the test strip. So this is a full piece of paper, eight by eight inch print. Now I've got to try and somehow, uh, I'm going to try and burn that sky in, if I can. I need to make a shape so that I'm covering the grass and also the, I could cut this out on cardboard. I need to make a shape, something like this maybe, I don't know if you can see that, but about there, one, two, three, four, five, We'll see what happens there, and I'll do the same again this side. One, two, three, four, five. Just burning that tree in the background. That should be all right. And then uh, we're just going to now burn this area, the bottom of the grass in, using my dodge tool. It's quite tricky because the camera's over there. I'm, I'm usually over this side, but <laughs> we'll give it a go anyway. One. So I'll use my hand for this actually. Like I said, one, two, three, four, five and off. Let's see how that looks. That's quite a waste really what I've done there. Um, I've got a nine and a half by 12 inch paper. I made an, only made an eight by eight test print. What I should have done was cut the bottom of the paper off and put it in my box of test strips. I usually do, but in this case I forgot. And I didn't have the easel on the right side either. Look, got more board on one side than the other. But this is still a test print, so is what it is. You can see the image coming through now. It does look nice. That burning, yeah. I just caught a little bit of haloing, I think, on the tree. Yeah, I just caught some not very nice haloing on that tree. So I think I'm going to avoid doing any burning in the background. I'd like to do it, it just gives it so much depth, that tree. I might have to um, try something else. So that's the uh, print I just made. It's actually really nice, I really do like it, but there's those scratches on the neg. Uh, maybe a little bit too much burning down the bottom here. Um, actually, don't look too bad. But definitely the halo part of it, yeah, that's not, that's not giving us any justice at all. So they're not gonna be very easy to see the scratches. I'm going to have to use my loop and start looking at some of the negs, see which ones are going to work and which ones aren't. That one don't look so bad actually. That might be a printer. So I've just put it in the neg carrier, just uh, blowing anything off that might have fallen onto it. A little bit of skin flake maybe or some sort of micro hair off of my t-shirt. It looks clean. Yeah, I can't see no scratches on this one. Might be having a result here, guys. So I've just made two simple test strips. This one was at five seconds, which was the same time as the previous print that I made. Uh, at this point, the sun must have come out and made the uh, negative a little bit more overexposed than the previous ones. So I had to go uh, double the time. This was just 10 seconds. So two pieces of paper, one at five and one at 10. No contrast filters apart from that uh, contrast two. So there's no split grading is what I'm saying. Uh, and this looks really nice. I'm hoping that I can get away with this one. Uh, let's see what I can do. The clouds look nice. The tree looks great. I'm just going to do a little tiny bit of burning at the bottom like I like to do. And that might come out quite nice. And there's the negative on the baseboard, the one I'm working on now. It's quite nice, I've got all the detail in there, so all I need is 10 seconds on that, and then just use my hand, I'm just gonna burn in a little tiny bit at the bottom and just sort of pull it out into the corners like so. Uh, maybe for another, another two or three seconds, that's all, so then your eye's drawn towards the tree and not this area 
of the print at the bottom that's what I like to do so let's uh, do this one so 10 seconds simple stuff and just going to use my hand just a few seconds on the bottom one two three and down and off see how that looks so I'm pleased with that one that one's come out really nice I just need to do another print I just feel like it needs a little tiny bit more up here in the sky just to burn very slightly not too long maybe maybe a second or two just to um, make that pop a little tiny bit but also I think during the first 10 seconds I'm just gonna dodge this area here so this will get, be, be a little tiny bit lighter in the grass you can see it here I just want to try and make that pop so uh, let's try that one just need my little dodge tool one two that's enough a bit more couple of seconds down below one two off and then just the top of the sky one two just into the corners and off should be done So that's the final print I've made. I'm quite happy with it. It's not. There is a slight little mark, scratchy bits up here, but you can't really, you can't really tell. You'd have to pixel pop this uh, to see the scratches. But so uh, you can see the difference between the two there. Where I've just burned. Let's pull that back right towards the light. You can just see it's a little bit lighter under the tree where I stopped the light getting to the grass area. Uh, a little tiny bit of burning here, but the most. Uh, change was the sky. I've just burned that in a little bit more so it kind of um, suits a paper a bit more. You know, it doesn't look so white as the paper does as this one here. So it's a bit of a prophecy really because when I was on the downs I took an Instagram shot of myself and posted it up on Instagram and said if it works it works, if it don't it don't and funny enough everything worked out well apart from the negatives were scratched so I wasn't gutted, you know, you know, it was the point. It's just a photograph. I can go back up there and shoot it again. I'm not going to let it frustrate me. Um, you know, I'm not trying to make the master prints, etc. Like I said, if it's a paid job and you're getting paid to do something and, and you, you know, there's not much chance of you getting back, then yeah, it can be pretty frustrating. But in this day and age, we've got digital for all that stuff. Um, I'm playing around with film photography and I've had a great time in the dark room. And also, like I said, you know, if you're feeling like I was just staring into a blank canvas that morning thinking, I don't know what to shoot. I was like, I want to go up on the downs again but I've shot the downs so much and then I thought to myself well no go and change it around do something different so I did I shot f4 two fiftieth of a second one tripod position and uh, you know I, I challenged myself and enjoyed my shoot that way so anyway guys hope you enjoyed the video in the darkroom session thanks for watching if you did watch the end don't forget you know it's only photography don't get frustrated or beat yourself up over it you can always go back another time and reshoot as I probably will here or if you start getting a little bit bored a little bit unchallenged in photography try and change things around for yourself uh, that I did on this time I was shooting there for 250 of a second same tripod position all the way through help me out I'll catch you next time